Eric, no, I want you to notice the name. This is Eric Lloyd Wright. He is the grandson. He does do a lot of things. Frank Lloyd Wright. I have, let, me, let me look at your shoes. Because you have some pretty big shoes to fill. Yeah, uh, I've got some pretty big feet. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> Well, it is a huge event, and sometimes it can be a little daunting. But on the whole, it's it's been a wonderful experience. Oh, really? If you hadn't been my grandfather, I would have been in architecture, which is a wonderful profession, and I wouldn't have had the experience of having worked with her. Were you actually able to work with her? I've known these days, and over a period of about eight years. Of course it is. Yeah. Do you realize, I mean, one thing you hear about him, but he's his grandfather. So, did you understand how important he was when you were yeah. learning from him? Well, I, I did when I went to work with him. Yeah. Uh, and I was uh, out of high school. I graduated from high school and I went to become an apprentice. Uh, he had uh, an architectural practice, but he also had students. He called them apprentices. There was no formal education. He learned by doing actually working on the drawings of houses that were being built and by actually doing construction. I thought that was the best way for an architect to learn architecture. And it also involved uh, what we called, we called it the apprenticeship, the Taliesin Fellowship. And there we did everything. We did our own carpentry, our own We did our own cooking. Our own laundry, we had our own chorus. <laughs> now, do you we do had that with your, Do you do that with your company now? No. <laughs> no it's, 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 we do we do the cooking, we have a lunch. A communal lunch. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, no, that was where we all lived together. It's quite an undertaking. It was. It was. In fact the school is still going, still operating the same way. Do you do anything with this? Uh, I occasionally go back. I've been on the board of directors. Yeah. Yeah. No, we're called the Taliesin Fellows, which is a, like an alumni association. So, besides being influencing your career decision, how else did your grandfather influence you? Well, I think he influenced me in a great way, the way I think about man's relationship to the earth. Yeah. <laughs> and he was very much working with nature. That was a very important part of his philosophy, and uh, which I think had a great influence on me. And what in the architecture that grew out of that he called organic architecture. And uh, so I learned a great deal about that from him. And, it, and as he said, to make great architecture, you have to create great architects. And to him, that meant not just studying buildings and being able to draft. But it meant really being aware of poetry, of all kinds of art, painting, sculpture. It, as I said, we had a chorus, we had a music ensemble. It was very important for everybody to participate in the arts. That was the foundation for the architecture. I have to ask you this, because I think it goes with anyone coming from something that was legendary. You know, like Elvis Presley, they always ask us, you know, do you want to sing your father's song? Do you ever want to build your, your grandfather's houses? No. No? No, I restore them. Ah. I do help restoring them because I feel I have an insight into what my grandfather does with architecture and study and heard him talk, heard my father and discuss with my father and worked with him for 30 years in architecture, so I felt I had a good understanding of how to interpret Frank Lloyd Wright in the restoration. But I do that for my father and my grandfather. I don't do it for anyone else. It's too time consuming and I have my own... Is your style very different than his? No, it isn't. It grows out of his style, out of his form. And he said that if you understand the principles that I am using, to create buildings, you will not be imitating them. You will have your own form. It will be creative and they say, ah, oh, that's Eric Wright. And it's very difficult. <laughs> I mean, there have been over a thousand apprentices that have gone through and worked. Some of them directly like myself and my grandfather. And uh, 
some have done pretty well. My father is one of them, and I think John Lautner, another art critic, was one of them. And there are a few that came up, but none of us, none of us, have touched where he was. And we don't try. Right. We have our own form. We do what we do, who we are. And that's the way we have to yeah. One last question to ask you, or maybe two, about you and your grandfather. What's the best piece of advice that he ever gave you? Best piece? I think. I think the best piece of advice is appreciating and be here, be with the moment. Now, he was very present. I never realized that before until people keep talking about now. <laughs> That's the way he was. He was focused on what he was doing at that moment. Because when we used to ask him, what is your most famous, what building do you like most, Mr. Wright? He said, the one I'm working on. Because he was totally in the present. And it's a hard lesson to learn, but I think it's the best one we should have. If you were to tell him something right now, today, what would you tell him? Well, <laughs> I would tell him that I am working the best I can to follow these principles that he was teaching us. Wow. That is very